हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द न्यू लेक्चर ऑफ हेलो एल्केस एंड हेलो अरेन्स नाउ टिल नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इस टॉपिक्स एंड आर टुडे टॉपिक इज सम मोर रिएक्शन ऑफ हेलो एल्केस एंड हेलो अरेन्स बट बिफोर दैट आई वॉन्ट आस्क यू वन क्वेश्चन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द न्यूक्लियोफिलिक सब्सिट्यूशन रिएक्शन एंड द एलिमिनेशन रिएक्शन राइट If we have a reactant and a base, say OH minus or NH two minus, and if both reacts, whether the nucleophilic substitution reaction will take place or the elimination reaction will take place, how will we come to know that that OH minus or that NH two minus will act as a nucleophile or it will act as a base? So let's discuss about elimination and the substitution. together right now elimination versus substitution now we all know that an alkyl halide with alpha hydrogen atoms when react with a base can undergo two type of path first path is substitution reaction second path is elimination reaction now substitution reaction elimination reaction both depend on the strength of the base and type of alkyl halide how route taken up depends on the nature of alkyl halide whether it is primary secondary or tertiary we'll discuss more about it strength and size of the nucleophile now if the nucleophile is bulky that generally tend to show the property of the base means elimination takes place right and if the primary alkyl halide if we talk about the alkyl halide if alkyl halide is primary then there will be very less steric hindrance then it will prefer to undergo sn2 reaction in the case of secondary alkyl halide it can undergo substitution reaction also and the elimination reaction also but in the case of tertiary halide if carbocation is already formed it can undergo sn1 reaction otherwise it will undergo the elimination reaction because the doubly bonded carbon will have more alkyl group we will get sdf product you can say right so it will depend on alkyl halide whether it is primary secondary or tertiary or it will depend on the nucleophile if nucleophile is water water cannot eliminate the hydrogen from alkyl halide very easily right but it is ns2 minus or some other better nucleophile or you can say that better base the electron charge density is more in that case elimination takes place so the conditions of the substitution we can say that if the alkyl halide is primary then substitution will be the predominant way and if the bulk of the alkyl halide increases from primary to tertiary the bulkiness of alkyl halide increases then it will tend to go in the elimination reaction right so it will depend on the type of the alkyl halide and the strength of the base also let's move ahead let's talk about the reaction with metals now if you remember we talked about the chemical properties of alkyl halides the first chemical property was the nucleophilic substitution reaction we have already studied sn1 sn2 elimination reaction that is beta elimination reaction and third was reaction with metals right now if an alkyl halide organic chloride bromide iodide reacts with the metal they form carbon metal bonds right and in the compounds if carbon metal bond is present these compounds are called organometallic compounds for example grignard's reagent which is formed when magnesium reacts with alkyl halide so example is given there 
alkyl magnesium halide that is rmgx which is known as grignard reagent now these reagents are obtained by the reaction of haloalkanes and magnesium magnesium is a metal and alkyl halide is reacting with a metal okay now when ethyl bromide react with magnesium it forms ethyl magnesium bromide that is example of grignard reagent so we can say that the name of this particular compound is ethyl magnesium bromide so this is ethyl magnesium bromide it's an example of grignard reagent and how we can prepare it just react magnesium with alkyl halide right now let's talk about the nature of the bonds present in the grignard reagent in the grignard reagent the carbon magnesium bond is covalent so you can see here there's a covalent bond and magnesium and halogen bond that is ionic right and one more thing i want to tell you is the oxidation state of magnesium here is plus 2 so if oxidation state of magnesium is plus 2 it means that r is carbonion this is carbonion it means that it is r minus so it can be ch3 minus c2h5 minus c6h5 minus right and halide ion is also present there now grignard reagent are very reactive towards the source of h plus ion source of h plus ion means water amine carboxylic acid or any acidic substance now if grignard reagent reacts with water so what will happen we know that this rmgx in this rmgx the grignard reagent r is alkyl group having the negative charge so h plus will come towards r minus and we will get rh which is an alkane and we will get mgohx and you can also say that this can be considered as one of the method of converting alkyl halide to alkane now this will help you in the conversions so if anybody ask you convert ethyl chloride to ethane heat ethyl chloride with magnesium it will give you ethyl magnesium chloride add water you will get ethane right now what will happen if alkyl halide react with sodium woods reaction alkyl halides react with sodium in dry ether now this is the point to be noted we are always taking dry ether in the case of the preparation of the grignard reagent we took dry ether now it's woods reaction we are taking dry ether why ether is dry first thing we need a solvent ether act as a solvent point number 1 point number 2 if it is not dry if it is moist then that moisture can react with sodium and magnesium because both are very very reactive metals right that's why we take dry ether so alkyl halide reacts with sodium in dry ether to give a hydrocarbon containing double the number of carbon atoms present in alkyl halide this is woods reaction and it can be represented as this so twice of rx plus twice of na in presence of dry ether will give you rr plus twice of nax so this is written in ncert let's see what does it actually mean so now how many atoms of sodium 
or how many moles of sodium are present? 2 moles. So, what will happen? These 2 moles will react with 2 mole of halogen and we will get 2 moles of NaX and then 2 alkyl groups will combine and they will give us alkane having the double number of carbon atoms which were present in the alkyl halide. Let us take an example. So, the example, the simple one I am taking twice CH3 Cl. This is chloromethane plus twice of Na in presence of dry ether. Now, what will happen? Sodium will take away this chlorine and it will form NaCl. That is for sure. So, we will write it twice NaCl, right? Plus, now two methyl groups are left. So, we will write CS3, CS3. So, it was chloromethane. Methane means one carbon atom. What we are getting? We are getting ethane. Ethane means we are getting an alkane having the double number of carbon atom which were present in alkyl halide. This is Wood's reaction, right? Let us move ahead. <laughs>